today we're taking the all new 2023 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 Desert Boss on an adventure. We're gonna load up our Upco 2x2 motorbike, hook up the trailer, and then we're heading to our mountain course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The ZR2 is the extreme off-road version of Chevrolet's very popular Colorado midsize truck. This competes with the likes of the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, and of course the upcoming Ford Ranger Raptor, which I have on order and should be here hopefully by November. The ZR2 here comes standard with front and rear lockers, 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory Mud Terrains, Multimatic DSSV dampers, underbody protection, fog lamps, a spray and bed liner, recovery hooks, and a full trailer package with connections and the ability to tow up to 7,700 pounds. The Desert Boss version of the ZR2, which we have here, kicks things up a notch. With a roof mounted light bar, a bed sport bar, beadlock ready 17 inch wheels, special front bumper with safari bar, underbody cameras, leather seats that are heated and ventilated, a blacked out name badge. Of course, it has special stickers. Can't miss the special stickers. All ZR2 trims come with a standard 2.7 liter high output turbocharged four cylinder engine that produces up to 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. The transmission is an eight speed automatic with a dual range transfer case and a four auto setting. EPA rates economy at 16 miles to the gallon in the city and on the highway. Price as it sits here with a number of options, including sunroof, tech, and convenience packages, you're looking at $61,925 US dollars, including destination. For today's adventure, we are gonna take this ZR2 Desert Boss to our mountain test course near Ellensburg, Washington. But this time, I'm not just gonna run the courses and call it good. Nope, bringing my son along, and this time we are camping out. That means I am loading a lot of gear. It also means I'm bringing along our Upco 2x2 electric motorbike in the bed, and I'm even gonna hook up our camper trailer. So this isn't testing out the max towing capacity. In fact, the trailer weighs about half what the max towing capacity is for the ZR2. But it will give us an opportunity to feel what it is like to tow with this vehicle. Also, it gives me an opportunity to try out some of the advanced features that are included in this package. Okay, with the Umco 2x2 electric bike all loaded up, now all I have to do is just align the truck and hitch it to the trailer. So I initially parked the trailer here using my Ranger, uh, which might have a slightly different tow hitch. So uh, not sure about the height here. I am gonna be basically getting out and checking multiple times. So what do we have here to help us get hitched? Well, really it's all about the cameras. And there are so many cameras here. Crank it over. And then crank it over this way. Okay, now we're getting close. Now it's just giving me warnings. I would really like for it to stop doing that. So this is where a physical button would have been really useful if I could just turn it on and off instead of having to go into the menu, I think. Oh, look at that, park assist. It's under controls. Ah, there. Okay, so that should help now without so many alarms. So, so at this point, I could probably do the downward view. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. I think if I just go backwards. Whoop, whoa, whoa. Little, there, there we go, that should be perfect. Now let's drop it on the ball. Okay, it's all hooked up. Uh, I do need to add some sway bars. I actually have these attachments that help with towing. I'll put them on after I pull this out though. Um, as soon as I attach it, I'm up and running here. I have a guest trailer, it just pops up. Um, I have electronic brakes. Do I have a tow controller on this one? A brake controller? Oh yeah, right down here. Let's try that. It says it's good. 
Uh, no issues found with lights. Can I do a light test? Oh, it's unavailable while driving. Okay, let's just do a light test. Inspect your trailer lights as they turn on and off. Okay, that's cool. It's flashing my lights all around so I can see that everything is good. Right, electrical is good, let's pull it out. Go this way, I forgot. Ha! <laughs> Trailer, it's opposite. Okay. Now we'll straighten that out. Okay. Good, it pulls straight. Now that we have the trailer all hooked up, it's time to set it up here in the Colorado ZR2. So I'm just gonna pick add new trailer. It automatically detected the trailer when I turned the vehicle on, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're gonna call it the R-Pod. Say, yep. So it's now asking me what kind of trailer it is. I'm gonna say it's a travel trailer. Go ahead and hit done. Ooh, theft alarm. So this is cool. If somebody disconnects your trailer, it'll set off the vehicle alarm when you're parked, which is neat. Time to head out and hit the highway. So I've been driving for about an hour so far and I definitely have some thoughts about this Colorado. First off, the MPGs really suck when you're towing. Uh, this is not a very heavy load. It's probably mm, borderline 3,000 pounds and I am averaging 10.3 MPGs. Now granted, we have gone from sea level to about 1,500 feet so far, but we're only halfway. We're gonna go up over a mountain pass that's 4,000 feet and end up at the test hill, which is at 2,200 feet. So we definitely have more climbing to do. Our MPGs are probably going to get even worse. So this is a four cylinder engine with a turbo. It's a 2.7 liter, it is their high output, but, but when you're hauling things up hills, you definitely, I mean, you feel, the, you feel that lack of cylinders, that lack of displacement. Uh, there is a lot of really high revving. I mean, you can hear it now. I'm using tow mode and it's keeping the engine in its peak power band. So we are basically sitting between 3000 and 4000 RPM. That's a lot of RPMs. Um, it's fairly effortless to tow with this vehicle, but it's kind of always annoying to be so high up there. Now, when going down a hill, of course, it will also keep those revs high uh, to help with engine braking as you're going down, which is kind of nice. In terms of trailer control, I do have a little controller down here by my left knee. Um, I also have the ability to modify gain, which is nice. And of course, because I've hooked up the trailer and I've told it that I have a trailer, it's adjusted the blind spot monitoring to compensate for the extra length of the trailer. I like the look of this truck and the wing mirrors are definitely part of the look. However, when you're towing, they're not quite big enough. I can either adjust them to see my traffic or the part of my wheel, I cannot do both. So I would actually like slightly larger mirrors or maybe one of those little extra wide inserts that you can stick on it. But there's just so little mirror there, I'm not really sure where I would put it. So that's kind of a downside with towing with this vehicle. However, in terms of power, in terms of, you know, just overall feel, it's fine. You know, it's it does work. If you are towing something very heavy and you tow a lot, maybe this isn't the right vehicle for you. You should probably consider getting something a little bit bigger, a little bit more capable. And if it's a heavy load, you might want something with load leveling in the back. The seats could be more comfortable. I've been on them an hour and I'm finding them to be very stiff. I definitely prefer the feel of my Ford Ranger Tremor. Now, obviously Ford Ranger is changing their seats, and but I assume they'll still be good because typically in Ford vehicles, I find their trucks have very comfortable seats. I'm definitely looking forward to getting my Ranger Raptor uh, October, November-ish. We'll see when it gets delivered and hopefully there's no more production delays.
fingers crossed. So right now we're about to go over Snoqualmie Pass. This is on Interstate 90 in Washington State. It's a fairly steep climb, uh, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how this truck behaves as we make the climb up the mountain. So they say that the um, MPGs on this are like 19. That's the rating for city highway. So it usually does drop pretty substantially when you're towing. But the funny thing is that this small vehicle with its turbo four is giving about the same MPGs that you would get if you had a V8 or if you had a turbo six and towing. So usually you want to go with a smaller engine because it's more economical. But <laughs> once you're towing, that goes out the window. Okay, we're making the climb. MPGs have dropped to 8.9. Trying to maintain my speed, uh, which actually is not a problem. This has plenty of power to haul this trailer up this climb. Okay, as we're easing up on the hill here, it's getting a little bit better. Motors kind of wound down to around 3,000 RPM. MPGs have been dropping. We're now at 8.7 easily maintaining the speed limit with this trailer though so that's good oh i didn't want it a little bit more power and now it's bumping up to 4700 sorry 40 45 4400 rpm oh man can you imagine listening to that all day uh this is doing fine it's fine it's fine <laughs> wouldn't buy it just for towing but if you're doing a little adventuring it's fine Oh, by the way, the transmission heat is still within acceptable range. It hasn't really gone up much at all. I mean, it's definitely in the top three quarters, but it's not anywhere near the overheat bar. So we're doing good on that. We've made it over the past. We only have about 45 minutes more of driving, which I'm kind of happy for because these seats aren't that comfortable. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll bring the trailer up to the test hill and set it up. And then we're going to test the ZR2 on the mountain test course. It's going to be fun. Here we are finally at the mountain test course. And this is actually going to be an interesting test for this truck because we have a very steep grade to get up to the pad where we're going to park it. Uh, and right now we're just in rear wheel drive. So um, probably have to switch to four high, I expect. Uh, mostly because not only is it a steep climb, it's also gravel. So I can actually just switch this into four auto by pushing the button there, even while driving. Now it's switched into auto four wheel drive. And up we go. Let's see what kind of grip we got here. Come on, you got this. Oh, it's struggling a little bit. A little loose surface, keeping momentum. I can feel the tires slipping around a little bit, but uh, it's doing otherwise fine. Cool, now let's uh, just park it. So I had an idea that I can just go in nose first and then unhitch. That way we would have the door facing the right way. Yeah, there should be enough runoff there to do this. Oh yeah, perfect. Now that we have the trailer unhitched and the cargo unloaded, it's time to test out this ZR2 Desert Boss on our off-road course. Now here we have a number of different routes. The first set of courses are going to be very easy for a vehicle as capable as this, but it does give us an opportunity to test out some of the off-road features. But we will then escalate things until we do the Ladder and Python Pass, which really should put this vehicle to the test. So the first course we're going to do is called Go For Run. This is actually our easy course. And the reason we're starting here is so that we can basically play with the different features that this vehicle comes with uh, before we're in too perilous of a situation. Uh, so first off, let's look at the hill descent control system. Uh, if I click it here, 
and then I go to, oh no, it's hit the vehicle, hill descent control, it then gives me a little light up there, and then, how do I get this to work? Okay, I basically stop on a decline, it says it's set for one mile per hour, I'll take my foot off the brake, and then it grabs me and eases me down. Now, can I increase and decrease? I can, uh, in single mile per hour increments, which is pretty nice. Yep, that's pretty much what you want that system to do, and it works pretty good. Here we are just easing down the hill very slowly. Okay, it's a little start and stop. It's not very consistent. It is vacillating between one and three miles per hour. Uh, I would like it to be a little more consistent, but this is still good. It's doing a good job of grabbing and easing me down. Okay, well, enough of that. As soon as I'm done with hill descent control, I can just add throttle or I can disable the feature right there. Some other cool features here. We do have lots of cameras at hand. Uh, to get there, I have to go into the menu because everything requires you to go into the menu, which I don't love, but the features are there at least. Uh, not only do I get a front view camera, um, a surround view camera, a back camera, I get side cameras, and best of all, I get undercarriage cameras. I can point forward or backwards as I like, which is pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to do the climb. I'm just keeping this so far in 4 auto, and it is working just fine. As we slowly ease up the hill, let's see how this does. Now, a two-wheel drive vehicle has real issues getting up this. Uh, in 4 auto, it's doing fine, shifting that power from the back to the front as necessary and keeping us moving. Okay, and up we go around the edge, and boom, to the top. Okay, now we can move on to something a little bit more challenging. Aha! Now we're going to move on to the Rattler, and the Rattler is like a standard logging road here in the Pacific Northwest, one that has, you know, seen better days. But it's a good opportunity to check clearances and to play with some more of the off-road features on the ZR2. I should also mention there are a number of gauge clusters available on this truck, and it's actually, uh, some of them are pretty nice. Um, I usually use just the general TAC Speedo setup, but now that we're off-road, let's switch to the off-road setup. And this gives us all the information that we need at a glance. We have pitch, roll, all the temperatures, including transmission and oil. Uh, plus, we can see the steering angle and the current condition of the front and rear lockers. As we roll forward here. Now, normally, I have to be really, you know, slow and methodical here on the Rattler. But because this is wearing 33 mud terrains and lots of underbody protection, and it has the Multimatic shocks, I can just blaze through this at around seven, eight miles per hour, no big deal. So here, normally we would do a lot of setup, but given the mud terrain tires that we're wearing uh, and the overall capabilities of this vehicle, I'm just gonna keep it in four auto and we're just gonna drive up. So let's do it. And we could use more momentum than usual simply because of the ground clearance we have as well as, oh, the underbody protection, yes. So for the next leg of the trip, we're going to jump onto the Sidewinder. And what we have there is uh, some stacks of rocks as well as a steep climb out. And that will give us an opportunity to test some of the more advanced features of this rig. Here we have some rocks. Okay, now for this section, we're going to go ahead and switch things into four low. Just hit a button there, make sure it's in neutral. And this will test a couple things. First, we're gonna look at articulation. Can it reach down and grab the dirt? If it can't, that's where we need to engage the locker so that it'll shift power um, or lock power so both wheels rotate at the same rate. Uh, let's see, four low. Okay, now that we're going forward here, I wanna get as close to the right as possible. I'm gonna see if we can lift a tire off. I need to add more rocks to this rock crossing, but you know, it's a start. I manually have to carry each rock down from the upper part of the hill. So that's no fun. Let's see if we can get anything, or we have enough articulation to reach down. Yeah, we're 
we're touching the ground, I think, in all cases here. Yeah, no problem at all. Maybe look for some wheel braking still happening. But it is locking the front to back power 50-50. And up we go. Super easy. Okay, well now we are gonna move on to the hard stuff. We have the ladder and we also have Python Pass. Before we go up the ladder, we're first gonna go down. And uh, it gives us an opportunity to test out that hill descent control system, but in a real situation. <laughs> Uh, this is a very steep hill. Uh, I'll call off the numbers as we get up to the individual things. Um, I'm also going to turn on my front camera. Again, I got to dig into the menu, but that's okay. Here we go. Line it up. Oh, we're already at 9 degrees, 10 degrees, 12, 13, 15, 17, 20, 22. 23, 26, and now I'm going to let off the brake, and we're just going to go down the hill 27. <laughs> yeah, this is steep. And I'm just going to continue down, stop here. This is where it gets slipperier, and we're just going to let the system ease us down, see what kind of slipping we get. Oh yeah, we're a little slipping there. And the brake system is just, it's so controlled. I can hear it clanking very loudly as it tries to keep us easing down at one mile per hour. Oh, it is locked. It is locked at one mile per hour. So on that gentle hill earlier, it was vacillating between one and three. But here, where I actually need it, it's solid. I start to slip, it stops me, it regains composure, and then sets me down at one mile per hour. Wow, that's actually pretty good. So we can get down it using the, um, the hill descent system. How about getting up it? <laughs> Roll out of here. Okay, let's flip this around and go back up. Okay, so here we are, uh, the challenging hill climb. Now for this, I'm going to put it into drive. We're gonna put it into four low, which it already is in. I am gonna lock the rear locker. I'm not going to lock that front yet, though, because I don't think I need it. Um, I did notice earlier when coming up the Sidewinder that there was um, individual wheel braking happening, even in four low. So I'm kind of curious if that's going to happen here. Basically emulate a four locker in the front. Okay, with everything set up, let's go ahead and do this and see what we can do. Now I'm going to try to stay on the soft stuff here because I feel, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, uh, that was, uh, that didn't work like I expected. Let's stay on the hard stuff, maybe. Huh. Okay, let's try that again. That was just so much power and so much noise. Let's try to get this working this time. So I'm going to keep some momentum. We're just going to go. We're going to climb, 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 climb. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did my four-wheel drive turn off? When did my four-wheel drive turn off? That is so weird. What the heck? Let's do this again. Why did my four-wheel drive turn off? Let's go four low, neutral, four low. Okay, it's in four low now. I'm in drive. What the heck? Uh, let's go ahead and put the put the drive mode into off road. What? Come on, exit that. Let's put it into terrain, because that's going to give us rock climbing capabilities. Terrain mode not available. Oh, so if you have hill descent control on, terrain mode doesn't work. That's good to know. Weird. Uh, let's see. Back locker is on. Let's go ahead and do this and make sure it doesn't go into two-wheel drive again. So we're gonna go climb, 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 climb. Oh, we are having a heck of a time. Okay, so I think we're gonna roll back and turn on that front locker. Clearly we have gotten to some more challenging, oh, that's interesting, it's actually holding, it's holding this, okay. 
So I was trying terrain mode and terrain mode wasn't the right setting for this. Terrain mode is the slow crawl control mode. We don't want that. So it's on the hill climb here that we're gonna try out some of the drive modes. Yes, I've kind of avoided them up until now because they just haven't been necessary. So there is a terrain mode, which is for, for low. That is for crawling over very complicated stuff. Uh, it'll actually like apply the brake when you're not moving. So it's very good for crawling. However, this climb does require something a little bit mm, less finesse, <laughs> a little bit more brute strength. So we're not gonna go full on Baja, but we are gonna go off-road. I'm going to keep it in four low. I'm locking the back and I'm locking the front as well. So we have the best opportunity for success here. So let's go ahead and climb up it. And we should have some pretty good success here with everything locked. We're allowing some wheel spin. And whoa, this, this course has gotten very difficult. Now that we've uh, uncovered all of the moisture and it's all drying out, it has actually become extremely difficult. So we were able to get a couple vehicles up it, but now, oh my gosh. These mud terrain tires are not helping, I guess. Oh, let's see if I can just climb this last bit. So let's go ahead and switch it to Baja mode, which will give us maximum wheel spin, maximum power, and that'll just hopefully just brood us up it. Now we are at a 25 degree angle right now. Get out of these holes and floor. Oh, that's a hole still. Let's get out of this hole. Ah. Okay, let's see if we can get on this. Nope, just digging a hole. Wow. This is so hard. Maybe do it from here, 23 degree. Nope, we're just sliding sideways now. Okay. Well, let's try it in Baja mode. All the way up. Maybe from right about here. Maximum wheel spin, maximum dirt. Come on, come on, come on. We are not making it. Wow, this has become very difficult. Do this and up we go. Let's get some wheel spin. Just gonna floor it up it. That momentum going. Come on. Okay, the truck's trying, but we just can't make it up here. Let's not damage it. I think we're gonna go ahead and head on over to Python Pass. We are just digging this thing up and creating a lot of um, dust in the process. Okay, so let's revisit the site of the crime right here where the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Desert Boss could not get up. And there's a couple reasons I have a theory. First off, the tires. Those Goodyear terrain mud terrains just weren't as good as the Mickey Thompson mud terrains that were on the Bronco that we brought up here just a couple weeks ago. And something else I noticed with the Chevy was that when you put it into four wheel drive low, and you've locked the front and rear diff, there was still a lot of wheel braking going on according to the display. Now maybe the exterior shots will show something different, uh, but I would have to say that maybe the way it's putting power down isn't as effective as the Ford in these conditions. I think we need to throw some more vehicles up this hill to definitely know one way or the other. And when I get my Raptor, which is on order, I will absolutely be taking it up this. It'll be interesting to see. Now, unfortunately, it'll probably be November and conditions will have changed yet again. Conditions make all the difference on a hill climb like this. So what do you think was the cause of the Chevy not being able to get up this hill? Post the comment below. It's gonna get down without falling on my butt. Whoa, geez, okay. 28 degrees is really steep. So here we are now at Python Pass. This is more of that really loose stuff, uh, but it's also off camber. So it's actually more difficult in some ways, uh, but it's also different and uh, different is okay. Okay, and I'm going to then lock front and rear, great. Now I'm not gonna do any of the special drive modes. Uh, this is 
strictly four low lockers. That's it. And let's see what we can do here. Just gonna try to keep a steady momentum as we climb up this course and try not to cast too many rocks against the undercarriage. I see this system is trying to, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I wonder if it's the tires. Could be the tires. Like seriously, we just walked up this. We walked up it in a Ford Bronco two-door just a couple weeks ago. It was pretty dry out and it got up it no problem. I'm kind of surprised that this is having so many issues here. Come on, it's, it's come on, spin. I think it's the tires. These tires just aren't having it. Are we gonna get it? Are we gonna get it? We're slowly getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Rock, under body protection for the win. Oh, finally, oh, made it up that section. Whew. Okay, now we're gonna do the final climb out. That was harder than it should have been. Okay, and of course the Python pass is called that because it gets tighter as we go up. This vehicle has extra three inches of width, so can it make it through the corners? Let's see, we're going tight here. Up, 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 Do I can I do it without adjusting? Oh, that's so close. But we made it up. Woo! Okay, so that's the 2023 Chevy Colorado ZR2 Desert Boss. Now we didn't use every single feature today, but that's okay. There's so many different circumstances where you just need different features in this vehicle. Uh, but I'd say that for our test hill, this thing did pretty good. The ladder was a surprise. Now that could come down to conditions. It has been so dry here, there is no moisture in the hill. And that makes it very, very soft. Softer than the last couple times we went up it. However, considering it had so much difficulty, even with the front locker on a Python Pass, that has me questioning the tires. These tires just don't seem to have very good grab in these conditions. Uh, but I do love this truck. It's super fun. It's got lots of features. And really, you're going to have to push this thing pretty darn hard to ever even touch its capabilities. So that's our look at the 2023 Chevy Colorado ZR2 Desert Boss. If you're looking for a truck that is fully capable, looks great, and is super fun to drive, the Colorado ZR2 Desert Boss.